Vanessa Fire from Scrappy Mania. And today I'm going to show you how to refurbish this machine. Um, and actually it's going to be a series. It's going to take me a little bit to refurbish it. And I bought it for my sister. I got this machine. This is a 66. It doesn't have reverse. So it's just a 66 Singer. Very heavy duty. It's a great machine. The lady had it stored in her garage for a long, long time. And look. It's dry, as, it's very dry. There's no oil, so I'm gonna oil it, clean it, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. But one of the things, I've been buying machines, like I've been get, going to the thrift store and I've been getting the old retro machines, and one of the big keys that you really need to keep in mind when you get these machines is you wanna look underneath. Let me see if I can get the light. And you wanna make sure that you don't see a lot of rust. Now, there's a lot of dust on this, and this is easy to clean, but you mainly don't want to see a lot of rust. So um, I, don't, I didn't see any rust here. The other thing that you want to keep in mind when you are looking for vintage sewing machines is that it's not frozen. And when I turn the wheel on this, it's very loose. The other thing that you have to make sure is if you can, like I plugged it in. Now I had to remove all the belts because the belts were all rotted. They were disintegrated because of storage. They got dried rod. And she had an extra belt for the, um, the bobbin winder here. So I went ahead and replaced that. But the big belt that goes on the gear, I had to take that off. So there's no belt, but I do, you wanna go ahead and test it. And as you can see, my motor is wor working. There's no belt, so that's why it's not moving, but the motor is perfect. It works great. This is actually a knee, um, it has a knee pedal instead of a foot pedal. And you also want to make sure that it runs freely. See how it just very smooth? Now you do hear some friction because I haven't oiled it, but once you, you oil it, it's going to really be nice. The other thing that you want to look on these machines is to make sure you don't see the wires are fried. And as you can see here, all the wires here looks perfect. I'm gonna unplug it and see it looks pretty intact. There's no um, fraying or wires that you're gonna need to rewire or anything. So it looks pretty good. The motor, I'm gonna go ahead and take that off later on, but the motor looks good. It even has a little light. So you want to check that and you mainly want to look for missing pieces. I did not see any missing pieces. The tension is going to need to be cleaned and everything needs to be clean, but it looks pretty, pretty good. And I don't see that there's any missing bobbin. Another thing that you need to keep an eye on is make sure that your feed dogs move. I'm going to see if I can kind of guide you here. So let me see if I can put the light in a better angle. I hope you can see that. But one of the things, I did buy a sewing machine at a, thrift, at a Goodwill store and it worked, but then I didn't realize the feed dog wasn't moving. And it means that your gear, there's a gear inside the feed dog that makes that move. That was, um, it was plastic and it needed to be changed. So you gotta keep an eye on that and make sure that the feed dogs move. If it has plastic gears, unless it's a good price, don't buy them. You really want to look for metal gears. So any sewing machines that are before 1960 more than likely will have metal gears. And that's what you want to look for. You also want to make sure that the bobbin case is there. And this one does, it's a drop-in bobbin, so there's really not a bobbin case that I need. This whole mechanism is missing, the sewing machine would not work. Okay, so let me show you how to, what we're gonna do first. I wanna clean all the dust bunnies from here. So you wanna get it all nicely clean. So you're gonna pop this out and it pops out pretty easily. Get this out of the way. It pops out pretty easily. And then you wanna Take your finger, move this 
And this is a, a Singer 66. So I'm showing you how to clean a 66 Singer. You're going to move this and then you're just going to move the hand wheel a little bit to get this out. Okay? I always recommend that you have some kind of pla This is the bobbin that it uses. I always recommend that you have a plastic um, container or somewhere that you can put your screws and do not take more pieces out than you're going to handle. So like I'm going to go ahead and clean this real good here. I'm not going to remove more than what you see here. Because if you do start removing a lot of screws, you won't know where they go. Another thing that will be helpful is to take lots and lots of pictures. Now I know how this works, I mean this assembles, so I'm not going to take pictures, but when I start disassembling this area here, I am going to take pictures just to make sure that I put it all back together. Now, for I'm not a, an experienced mechanic that could do this stuff. I'm just this is kind of like my hobby. But these machines, these um Singer machines are very, very easy to restore. Okay. And then you move the gear to put that back in place. And see, it's you don't want to. One of the things I was reading, you don't want to loosen this knob here. If you do, it will mess up all your tension and it will not work very well. What you're going to need, so let me bring you out. So now what you need is a vacuum. I got a little handheld vacuum that I use for only sewing machines, for my sewing machines. And then you need these little mini attachment. They call mini attachment for all vacuums. And I'll put the link in the description below. And you want to get rid of all those dust bunnies there. Make sure you put this here in your container so you don't lose it. And I'm going to set that aside. And now I'm going to go ahead and vacuum. Really get in there with your vacuum and your small attachment and make sure you really clean this out. So if you see, look at all those dust bunnies under here. I see I got tweezers, but you want to get rid of, look at that. That's a huge dust bunny. And if you look under here, there's dust bunnies all over the place. So you want to get rid of those. Tweezers are very handy to really get into the crevices to get the dirt out. And because you're going to oil this, with a lot, you're going to put oil, you really need to make sure it's clean so that way the oil doesn't mix with dust and create some kind of sludge on the machine. So make sure you really clean it before you oil it. So don't be afraid. Just okay, On a new machine, you will never, those modern machines, you will never ever do what I'm doing now. But since this is an old machine, and when you look underneath, there's really nothing to it. So I'm going to go ahead and use this can, if I can get it to work. I need to open it. Okay. And I'm just going to use this to really get into the crevices. You really, really want to clean it so it works pretty nicely. Now, the reason why you don't want to do this to, with a, one of those new computerized machines because you can push dust over to the motherboard and and all the electric components. And that's why they recommend not to use a spray can but a vacuum. But for this one, it's okay to use a spray can because there's no really um, electronics that you're going to mess up. So I'm not very concerned with making it very shiny or, or bringing all the pieces to how it was from the factory, like very buffed out or really shiny. My main concern is to make sure that I get any oiled oil or any um, dust out of these pieces so that way when I do put some more oil on it, it doesn't um, create kind of like a sludge. Um, so I'm just making sure I'm cleaning it as, as much as I can now because I don't really know how to break these machines apart. That's why I'm doing the way I'm doing it. I'm just lightly cleaning the areas that I can clean, get to. And then I'm using some paint thinner to go over some of the oils or, or dust that really wasn't coming off. And I saw this on YouTube. And then I'm using a steel wool 
just on the metal piece just to get rid of any of those it had like a brown sludge on some of these pieces and that's cleaning it up pretty nicely so so now the next thing I'm doing is I'm cleaning this area here so I went ahead and remove um, the, the the gears and then I'm just gonna take so it's easy to remove it you just take the it, it had a a bolt in there and I took that off and I really don't want to take anything else off it looks like we can take this off here hold on so let's go ahead and remove the lamp make sure you don't lose these screws they're very old and it probably be hard. So this has a wash. Make sure you put that wash in a cup. Then the screw. So we can clean this very nicely. And then I can just set this aside here. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean this area, look how dirty that is. Let me bring you over. It's pretty dirty. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that. Okay, so I'm done with, I really vacuum in there. And there's still a lot of smudged, there's a little, lot of dirt in there. So you really need to make sure, clean that out. And then you can flip it on the underside and you can really clean it. So let me go ahead and flip it over and clean it. So I got it as clean as I could and now I'm just putting some oil. I'm using this Tri-Flow oil and that works pretty nicely. And I'm just putting the oil in, in the top of the machine and then I'm just moving it so that way I make sure that it gets distributed. And then I'm putting oil through all the little holes and here I'm also putting oil and as you put the oil on you are gonna move your your the pieces so that way you give it chance for the oil to move to distribute and then anywhere that you see where metal hits metal and it it kinda um, touch each other and it moves you wanna put more oil those are friction areas and you really wanna make sure that it has a lot of oil um, in order to, so it won't get frozen and it, it moves smoothly now um, it does have some instructions you lightly oil the machine but because this machine was in storage for so long I make sure I put enough oil to give it chance to really distribute very well through all the the parts so now I'm putting everything back together so the lamp goes here and it had a washer but I broke the washer but it seems to be okay without the washer and then I clean this plate, so I'm putting that back together. And actually here I was trying to put that washer, but when I try to put it back on, it broke. So I end up, there's the washer. It broke in pieces, but that's okay. It still worked, functioned. And then here I'm putting back my motor. So, but I neglected to kind of clean the motor so here I'm just taking a little brush that I have and it's dry there's no water or anything on the brush I'm just mainly trying to get all the dust out and then I'm going to use my air can because the, the motor is sealed so there's not any possibility of, of me putting any dust inside of the motor so I went ahead and get my air, gu my air can and really flushing out all the dust so that way it will be dust free was that that's free as I can get it so you just need to put back the bolt now you don't have to worry about the angle of that little area for the belt because when my new belt comes on I can always loosen the bolt in order to accommodate the belt but I, w I did get my belt just recently and I put it on and this belt that you see there is not the right kind you want to get a 15 inch belt that expands to a larger it's a it's a black rubber belt that's the one that I purchased and it works pretty good because it did stretch and it did get to where that little area there um, that you see that little disc area it did get to it and it, it actually works very nice 
Um, and it, it had a wonderful stitch. So um, I'm finished up cleaning the areas that I forgot to clean. I'm tightening all the bolts. And now I'm going to move over to the front of the machine. So now I'm going to move to the front and I'm going to put the face plate on. And I was able to clean the face plate with some steel wool underneath the sink. So that cleaned pretty nicely. It had a lot of dust. And then I'm going to go ahead and move to the bobbin area and making sure before I put everything together I want to make sure that it doesn't have any dust and I'm just screwing one of the plates in now I'm going to put the bobbin cover and I'll show you how to put the bobbin cover on here. The way to do that is you're going to come up from above and then push it in and then it catches on in there done Okay. You're going to put the presser feet on and then close. So I don't have the motor working because I need to get a belt, but we can always use our hands to see if it stitches. And it's doing a stitch. Perfect, and see how nicely it, you can hardly hear it, and it's very smooth. Very, very smooth. So I'm gonna go ahead. And now it is perfect. So you keep tighten the tension, and let's go over, see this stitch? It's perfect there. You don't see the brown coming across and it's good when you're checking your tension to always use two different color of thread and contrasting colors so you really can see. Now when we first tried it notice how you can see the brown thread which is the upper um, thread was coming across so it means your bobbin was too tight and the upper thread was too loose. So if you if you tighten the upper thread, the tension, you really never want to um, mess around with the bobbin tension. You want to always mess around with the upper thread tension. So if you tighten the upper thread tension, that will make sure that it will grab the bobbin and it will make that stitch a little tighter for the bobbin and um, less loose for the top thread. So then when I tighten up the, um, the tension, the upper tension, I still can see some of the bobbin thread right there. So you see the little little brown little um, dots. That's not good tension. Still, my my upper thread was too loose. My bottom thread was too tight. So I adjusted my tension some more. This one you can still see the brown. See how you can see the brown thread coming peeking underneath. That still means that your upper thread is too loose. This one again a little too loose and you keep tightening little by little. Don't do big dramatic tightenings of your upper thread. You just do little by little. And then the last one see how it you can hardly see or you do not see the brown and if you turn it over you do not see the white. So this is perfect stitch and that is a beautiful stitch for this machine. So I hope this was helpful how you can get one of these um, old little machines in a garage sale. The old antique machines are very easy to clean and, um, and refurbish and um, as long as you're able to turn the wheel freely and you don't see a lot of um, rust and on, on, the, on the main parts and that it has at least it needs to have your bobbin sometimes I've seen it without the bobbin that that got lost so make sure you have your bobbin make sure that your feed dogs are working again I have bought machines that the feed dog wasn't working I didn't realize it make sure your feed dog is working and then make sure your motor is running you can change belts they're easy to change you can change um, the, any rubber things you can clean it up so um, that's the way I, I kind of pick my machines when I find an antique one. So I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching. Bye. I just got a new.